your brand. <laughs> Is that how things go? Oh, we, we're not online, are we? Oh, yeah. we're oh, we are. <laughs> we are. Oh, things were, things, yeah, we're good. Things were fine. Um, I'm a little, little jet lagged. You go through different energy levels when you go through different time zones, and so. Where's your energy level right now? Well, now that that is over, <laughs> I feel pretty good. Um, it's always a good feeling to be to finish a presentation, you know, and then you're kind of up a bit, but. Um, Jeffrey. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's that's hot. great. I think we're all a little tired. You think? I think we might be. Yeah. But we look fresh. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, I look, I enjoy this and I enjoy, like, you know, I do a question and answer. Um, but in some ways, like, when you do an online presentation, throws you off too. I, I don't like having to go back and forth to the computer. Yep. And I don't like clicking on links that don't come up. You know? No, I, I actually don't like yeah. filming you going back and forth to yeah, the computer I don't like it. because I find that you disappear somewhere. Yeah. And just the minute I decide to focus on you is when you decide to move and change the website. Right. Like, oh, I gotta go back. In some ways yeah. it's easier just, you know, like even in Seoul. When you don't have to depend upon some machine, you can just sit down and actually just kind of yeah. talk to an audience. Yeah. And uh, although well, it is really nice to have the visuals, some of the things before. Yeah, there, there was some good stuff, but the trouble is the time. This 45 minutes is it's difficult to demonstrate to show all of that. It's really normally, you know, I give an hour, hour yeah. and a half presentation. It's rare that I have to give 45 minutes. And then at one time they threw me off. I, I, I swear I had only was on like 20 minutes, and they put a 10 minute sign and up, then and I went, Rob Oh my God! Said, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. It sounded like the computer from 2001. Yeah, it did, yeah. Dave, <laughs> Dave, I'm behind you. That's funny. I didn't get there to actually uh, yeah. to, 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 to screen that fast enough either. It's one of the things about learning to film. That yeah, is, I bet. It's great doing live work. I, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Watching somebody who's on stage and dynamic as yeah. you is really good practice. Yeah, so but also I'm, I'm not, I like uh, not being on the stage. Mm -hmm. My be favorite presentations are... You know, in in a smaller venue where you know the people are like right there. Yeah. You know, it just tends to be when people are kind of crowded together. Um, you know, just when I said be social, not antisocial, it's the same thing. When yeah. the teachers get crowded in a room together, they're more animated and they're a better crowd. Yeah, and it's it's much harder to do a big auditorium. In a huge, it is, in a huge yeah. room that's raked. But then again, you know what they say, who cares? <laughs> it's okay, yeah. you know, it's I, all right. I panned, I panned the crowd while I was shooting you, and that's I had good. a lot of faces that were laughing That's and good, yeah, so that well, that's really what good. it's about, that's right. When you teach, do you teach sitting down in front of your class? Oh, no. Well, how, how well first of all, I, I don't really teach anymore. No, I, know. I stopped when, in 99. When you did. Um, no, I was... Were you a stander? I was, yeah, def definitely a stander. I couldn't just sit in yeah. a chair. So my classes tend to be tended to be very. I don't have. Do I have to pick this up like that or no? Okay, okay. All right. My classes tended to be very lively, a lot of fun, a lot of moving um, around, moving around activities, and just you know the whole key was just. Uh, I wanted the students to like me sure. because I felt that. Um, you know, unless they felt comfortable and at ease, it was going to be very difficult to, to teach them to build English. That trust so, so that they take risks. yeah, and this, sure. that's what I learned. You know, that's what I learned before I did a TEFL certificate and in my master's degree. I learned that just, you know, being in the classroom, that the key is just in the beginning anyway to to get the students to like you. That's half the battle, and of course, the training kicks in too. So, to officially begin. Okay. This is Dave Sperling, probably a face that most of you recognize easily. Um, he is, he looks a, a little bit lively in person. Um, he's with ESL Cafe, www.eslcafe.com. Yes. Which I first knew as a English teaching job broker. House. What is, an, uh, um, what is that? Essentially a place where I could go to look for work uh -huh. and to see what kind of jobs were available. And it oh, was wow. probably a good six months after I started using ESL Cafe okay. that I realized that there were resources on the site. Right. And each time I take a look at the site, I find more and more resources. And today, with Dave's presentation, I actually found really in-depth mm -hmm. things for students as well, which, again, being right. something I haven't searched 
I, I wasn't aware of. So you've got a lot on that site. There, there is a lot. And one of the things that I am doing with a Canadian web designer who mm -hmm. taught in Korea is redesigning the site. And uh, so we're trying to to make it more user friendly and also to to bring out the highlights of the site. There are a lot of people that uh, they have no idea that I have even student student sections to the site and they don't know they don't know that I have things like ideas in the idea cookbook mm -hmm. resources for teachers or I have a whole section the web guide which is a good collection pretty good collection of links mm -hmm. you know thousands of links so you know we're trying to bring that all together um, I was actually going, going to show a demo of what the new design looks like but what I didn't get you, a chance let's sort of begin okay w with a, an overview okay what are you doing what is the revamp well, uh, it it's starting. <laughs> I'm really stuttering today. I don't normally stutter. I don't know what's. I'm really jet lag. I feel. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, now Take I'm ready to start. As slow as you need to. Take okay. Two. Now, the revamp. The revamp is beginning with the the main Dave's ESL Cafe page. There there are really two things the, that I want to do with the revamp. One is to make uh, the main Dave's ESL Cafe page is very important because. From that page, that's the gateway to the entire site. Now, um, uh, there are things that I like about the current design. I like mm -hmm. the simplicity of it, and there's a certain, I don't know, homemade comfort. Uh, but n to navigate the entire site from there, it just doesn't work anymore. Right. It worked, I think, fine up to a couple years ago, and now it doesn't. So the so you've outgrown yourself. Yeah, a long time ago, but right. it's just now that I've taken the time to, to actually get some help. I think you have to, the, I've done the entire site myself, and you have to come to a point where you have to mm -hmm. admit to yourself that uh, not only can I not do it as well as a professional, but I don't have the time, yeah. you know. And so now uh, I'm working together with somebody to uh, improve the look, the, the feel, and certainly the navigation of the site. And once the main page is finished, we'll move on to uh, the a, a header that will go on all right. the pages. And so uh, that way, people from uh, people can navigate the entire site, no matter where you are. You can get to every section of Dave's ESL Cafe. So getting back to the home will yeah, be very simple. As well as uh, have a common look. Cool. So now you know it's sometimes a little confusing because you might get onto a section of Dave's ESL Cafe and not even know you're on you're at Dave's ESL Cafe. There's too right. many different looks throughout the site. Yeah. We need to bring it together. It's kind of like Google. No matter where you are in Google, they, there's a common look to it. They've or, branded you know, themselves. They have, well. yeah. And I, in in my case. Um, it was just kind of difficult to do in the beginning. I wanted to, you know, yeah, I wanted to be creative. So if sure. I created another section, I wanted to create something mm -hmm. different. And mm -hmm. when I created a third section, I wanted it to look even more different. Right. And now I realize, not that it was a mistake, but I need to to make some changes. I've got a hot iron over yeah. here. We could brand them right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that kind of branding at Korea Boy, Bridge, my, nor do we my advocate wife, it for those at home. My wife would be very happy about yeah. that. Yeah, she's <laughs> always threatening to brand me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get, get a bright sort of multicolor Dave's ESL across your forehead. That's right. Then everyone wouldn't need your face there anymore. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, That's right. You thought about working in marketing? I, I'm considering. Oh, okay, it, well, there you go. Um, I, it's cool that, so this is a sign of Dave's ESL going a little bit larger in terms of your staff base, a little yeah, bit broader, right. and also a little bit more towards branding. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, uh, yeah, that's right. I think I've kind of. You know, I've branded, uh, I mean, Dave's ESO Cafe has become, it's strange to say, but it's become kind of a brand, you yeah. know. But, uh, you know, it was all just kind of thrown, thrown together. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a very disorganized person, and I think, you know, if you look at the site, you know, my personality comes out, and I'm horribly disorganized. I'm the kind of person that, uh, uh, you know, I can't find the keys to my car, or, uh, you know, if I, if sure. uh, my book, you know, I, I'm always reading a book, and when I'm done with one book, I start another book, and I'm always looking for my book. Yep. So I'm always asking my wife, where's my book? Which and book? Which book do you mean? Which book? You know, sure. the, now I'm reading uh, w this Life of William Randolph Hearst, so, you know, yes. William Randolph Hearst, my wife, you know, who's that? Yes. Anyways. So one of the things you've managed to brand really well with the ESL Cafe is right. your face. So my face. You've, you've made yourself essentially right. a, a, an ESL celebrity, which is rare and, and yeah. very cool. Um, so you're kind of a guru. And I'm going to get you to play. Right. Hail to the guru. Right. I'm going to get you to play guru for a few minutes. All right. I'll um, try. 
I'd like to pick your brain about where you think technology and the internet is going. Now, I was listening to you today. Mm -hmm. um, in your presentation, oh, amateur futurist, mm -hmm. um, what potential do you see for web technology in education? Mm -hmm. Where do you think we're going? How wired mm -hmm. do you think we can get? Well, I think what we're doing today, mm -hmm. even with this webcast, is a pretty good idea of the direction that we're going. I think uh, when I first got online in the early 90s, uh, the Internet was really basically text. Mm -hmm. It was text-based. And I think uh, over the years since, over the last decade, we've moved, uh, we still have text, but we've also moved towards, uh, of course, audio. Yes. And uh, audio certainly has made a big splash. Um, look what it's done to the music industry. The music industry is up in arms uh, because Indeed. of the, uh, you know, the, the downloading. The downloading. Uh, but at the same time, companies like Apple have kind of revolutionized even legal downloading. Yep. So the whole music scene, the whole, that's completely changed. Movies, film, video. For language learning, what excites me is, is the ability, uh, again, as I sp spoke a little bit about in my presentation, the ability to video conference, the mm -hmm. idea that, uh, you know, even as a teacher, it means, uh, you know, who knows, maybe there'll be a day when, uh, you know, I can teach in Korea without having to go to Korea. Actually, I think we're, we're at that day now. I've posted ads on my site for exactly that, right. even schools that are based in Korea that are now doing their teaching online. That's and right. so this is what I see. You know, so I can be in California and people say, well, where do you teach? Well, I teach in Seoul <laughs> from my desktop. Um, Sounds fabulous. Right. And I see we're moving into that direction. And certainly uh, in terms of, like, online learning, distance education, we're seeing more and more... Uh, graduate programs um, in different fields, masters and, well, yeah. not just that, Bachelor of Arts, masters and doctoral programs that can be done online and you distance. You can do almost any form of accreditation right. now online, you can. Including, right. including doctoral stuff. What I'm wondering is your focus when you think about education, and when you speak about your, your teaching career in the past mm -hmm. and what you're doing with ESL Cafe now, right. seems to be around communicability. Right, um, that's right. And essentially using the technology to, to broach distance. Right, that, but that's right, because to me that's the excitement of the Internet. You know, don't you yeah. think? I think that, uh, like, I, you know, I, the information superhighway. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. There's a lot, but there, were inf there was information in libraries, mm -hmm. too. You know, the Cal State University Northridge Library, where I was a student, had, has over a million books. I mean, I spent many uh, hours enjoying the information Absolutely. with books. So I, I have to say that uh, even though there's a wealth of information online um, and we've gotten so used to it that you know anything we want to find it's at our fingertips, what really excites me is the idea of uh, certainly the, the communicative element of the internet to meet and to communicate and then of course with that online learning as well, language learning. Right. One of the things that I'm wondering, do you see um, you mentioned earlier, Korea has 13 percent. Uh, is that what I said for the yeah, main page I anyway? You, Korea yeah, has 13 percent right. of your hits, which is yeah, which is okay. High. Yeah, now, Korea's got one of the um, highest connectivity rates in the world. We have a right. lot of internet here, right? And PC bongs, which are PC rooms, are super popular. Right. Um, for anyone to find internet access in this country is not a challenge. That's right. You meant your wife is from Thailand. Mm -hmm. Now, in the past couple of years, I've been to Thailand a couple of times. I'm noticing right. that there are more and more PC rooms there. There are. In schools, uh, is the accessibility at a high level? W do you see, in terms of global connectivity, uh, some difficulties in some countries and some places having far mm -hmm. more access than others? Oh, sure. You know, sure, you're, you're always going going to have gaps, um, you know, the haves and the have-nots, but I do think that it's changing quickly. Thailand is an example. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, it, it's, it's part of their national policy to get, you know, computers in all classrooms, mm -hmm. and uh, they're definitely becoming a very wired country. For me, and I know, I know how wired a country is by how easy or how difficult it is for me to get online. Mm -hmm. And now it's, it's really rare for me not to be able to get online. Uh, and now it's even, it's rare for me not to get online with high-speed Internet access. Mm -hmm. For example, I was in Mexico. I went to Ensenada, Mexico. 
have some great pictures in my gallery from there. <laughs> and uh, I, I was uh, over there, and uh, I was very worried because I thought, you know, my stereotype of Mexico was that they would not have high-speed online internet mm -hmm. access. But sure enough, they did. They had a no high-speed DSL. I was online faster in Ensenada, Mexico than my connection in Los Angeles. So sometimes, right. it's, sometimes it's very surprising, but there still will always be countries that will lag behind uh, other places in the world, but I think um, just about everywhere is moving into that technological direction. And uh, one of the things that I see you trying to do with ESL Cafe is offer the kind of resources where people can do, even if there is only one computer, available. Right, right. That people can download and people can broadcast to students. Absolutely. And, in and large groups. Yes, and, and not only that, but, well, it, again, it's rare for me to find teachers that uh, are not online in schools, yeah. but when I first taught, I would teach teachers how to be able to view pages offline, so they would, you know, right. they would uh, they had certain software. Well, and now I think you can do it through the web browser. You can you can grab web pages or websites, and even Dave's ESL Cafe, and you can view it offline. And so you know th this is another alternative to to schools or classrooms that are not uh, connected to the internet. So right. yeah, there's always some solution. That's great. One of the things I wanted to ask you: you're talking about going to Mexico, mm -hmm. and we have our preconceptions right. about what it's like living in a different country, learning in a different country. Right. You meet a lot of uh, ESL learners. Yes. And you meet a lot of native speaking teachers across right. the world. Right. What perceptions do you think, and, and perhaps problematic perceptions, do you mm -hmm. think that English learners have of native speakers' culture? Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Um, what hmm. difficulties do well, you that, think that? Yeah, that's a that good question. Have? Yeah. Well, there, there, there are a lot of students that just don't have the experience of uh, meeting a native English speaker. Um, you know, Korea is a very good example. Yeah. And uh, so when I was walking on the beach in Busan, you know, the children were coming up to me. It was quite a shock, even though I lived overseas. But <laughs> it's still a shock, you know. I mean, yeah. it's suddenly. Especially when you're just off a plane and you almost like forget you're in Korea you're because you're just, you know, you're shell-shocked. And then you have to remind yourself that they just don't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting defensive, you, you know, you lower your guard and you kind of embrace it. It has a certain um, rock star charm, actually. Yeah, if you <laughs> want to be a rock star. <laughs> for <laughs> right, some of us, yeah, it's for as some close of them like it. Yeah, I, fame, that's right? it. I, yeah. Um, but uh, I think, you know, again, uh, part of my job is to make, and not just students, but but when I go to a, a country and I meet the people, I like to to make them feel comfortable and uh, kind of be on my best behavior, if you know what I mean, that sometimes, sure. of course, I'm American and there's sometimes a, a stereotype and mm -hmm. sometimes people have a, a bad impression of what maybe a typical American is sure. like. And so I try my best to kind of be a diplomat mm -hmm. and be as pol polite and... Uh, well-meaning as, as I can. As far as the, when you said vice versa as the, for the teacher, I think uh, especially there's more pressure on the teacher. The teacher has come into this culture and so I know from my experience teaching it has been very very important to learn about the culture and the language as well. I, I've met um, a number of uh, foreigners working here in Korea that haven't learned Korean. And uh, from, from my experience um, it's kind of hypocritical, you know, like when a teacher goes in and says, well, you know, th this is how you should learn English, yeah. when they haven't taken the time to, to yes. know what the students are experiencing, that uh, it's not easy. How many, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the director. <laughs> uh, well, uh, my, my tie is okay. Um, I started off my first language, uh, I studied Spanish when I was a, a kid, and then uh, I went to Mexico and did a did a homestay and stayed stayed in Mexico for about six weeks. Um, then I lived in Japan and I studied Japanese, um, and then to Thailand. Uh, and uh, I'm not great at any of those languages, but most importantly is I've I, I've studied them. I still study them, and I try. Uh, and also when I was teaching, I knew what students were experiencing. So when I would see students that were hesitant or uh, that weren't quite getting it. I had that empathy for I what they're. I to resolve to take a page out of your book. Yeah, I my career yeah. has stopped. 
<laughs> right. Well, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. I, I practice my French, and that's I remember good. how hard it is to right. be searching for words that you don't know. It is and hard. How awkwardly I express myself in a second language. Sure, and it's hard as a teacher because, you know, when you're teaching a number of hours, I mean, I remember when I lived in Japan, and I'm doing an early morning businessman class. It's you know 7:30 yeah. in the morning, and I'm teaching a company at 8 o'clock at night. And you know, I mean, and then my friends are Canadian and uh, Australian and American, yeah. and uh, so uh, oftentimes uh, it's just not a priority. You're so yeah. busy with your work and uh, well, afterwards. Oftentimes, the, the the patients sometimes in moments can cease to be a priority because you spend. Yeah. You teach a class seven times a week. You, right. You've been going over and going over this concept, and it's, it's easy to forget that your students haven't actually heard it seven times or that you don't That's remember right. everything that you right. hear. That's right. Which is one of the cool things that mm -hmm. using the net and technology in a classroom can add is some reinforcement of the things that you are teaching. I agree. Yeah, that's right. So, so in. And along with language, of course, it's important to understand the culture because, uh, you know, especially in Asia, it's a very st old, strong culture. Mm -hmm. And there's so many do's and don'ts. And, so you know, sometimes I cringe when I see, you know, people, you know, as I don't know Korea, but when I go to Thailand, um, there are some people that just have no idea about the Thai culture. And, right. uh, and so I as a tourist or a teacher, um, it's uh, it's really harmful. Um, to not be sensitive. Right. Well, I made so m so right. many mistakes. <laughs> so you know, it's 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 definitely important to learn as much as you can about the culture, and I think that'll uh, help your time in that country, yeah. and uh, make you a better teacher too, because you'll understand where your students are coming from. Uh, you know, in Thailand, uh, and I keep going to Thailand, and I apologize, and it's just because this is where I I lived, and I don't. No, most Korea. Of yeah, so most experience. of my... But I remember, uh, you know, when you, when you go to Thailand, uh, people will often ask you in English, uh, where do where you go? Yes. You know, hey, you, where do you go? And at first I used to get really angry. First of all, they would call me you, you. Hey, hey, hey you. Hey, you. Hey, you. Hey, you. Yeah, yeah, what do you mean? Me? You know? And uh, where you... This is strange. And I would get really angry, you know, like, none of your business. Mm -hmm. Well, later, when I started studying the language, when they say you, what they're really saying is kun. Kun is like a respectful way. It's like, like sir. You know, it's like kun. They would call me kun David. Right. That's like, like you know, Mr. David. You know, they would never just call me David. It's like kun. Excuse me, right, sir, it is. So when they're saying, That's when, when they're they saying you, they're not doing it disrespectfully. And when they say where are you going, it comes from Pinai. And that's almost like saying, you know, Pinai means where are you going. But it's almost like, uh, like, uh, hi, how are you? It's like they, they show that they've taken interest in you. So when you're living in Thailand, people always say, you know, Pinai. Um, so again, when I first went over there, there was th they would say this, and it would make me angry because I did not have the the understanding of the culture and the language. Now you had mentioned that you don't have a lot of experience in Korea. Um, we're going to try to resolve okay. that a little bit this evening. That we're, sounds good, we're right? Planning on the uh, the the real Korean culture as best as we can show you soju challenge. Okay, um, but <clears throat> I am curious. I know you travel a great deal. Um, I know that a lot of your users are from Korea. Right. You first came to Korea last fall. That's right. Um, how much time have you had an opportunity to spend here? Not Any enough. Time? No, not not uh, not very much time at all. Um, a lot of people have the misconception that I've taught in Korea, and because I do, my, yeah, right. My, the Korean pages are very very popular, uh, especially with expat <laughs> teachers here in Korea. And uh, but this is just how it it just evolved that way because sure. Korea just it, there's a huge teaching there's a huge uh, EFL market here lots of teachers and here we lots also of had jobs the internet really early. you had the internet had early internet, so. you're right and so in the beginning Korea just uh, uh, from my side just took off so I ended up having to create separate sections for Korea mainly because Korea just dominated right. the other sections and it wasn't fair because it was just difficult it's hard you know when for example I, I have maybe 270 jobs posted for Korea this month maybe 170 for the whole rest of the year and if you had that on just one board yeah. then 
Korea w would have been, and it was, just too dominant. So it's just how the site evolved. And uh, so a lot of people, I, every day I get email from people that think that I'm over here teaching and well, ask you me, you know, they'll, well, they'll ask me especially questions about breaking contracts and uh, a lot of questions that I just cannot answer really because anyone with those questions should tune into the EFL law forum oh, which yeah. I believe is at 4:45 ish later maybe four o'clock next session EFL law not Dave yeah that that's right that's a that's a great resource uh, wonderful resource uh, or my Korean forum uh, recently uh, one of my moderators uh, created a, an FAQ mm -hmm. which is outstanding and uh, oftentimes I'll give uh, users the uh, the URL for that and they'll get online and they'll look that up and there's just there's answers there that are wonderful now in the new site mm -hmm. as you're developing the new site as you're revamping it right will career retain its own sections oh absolutely yep okay. yeah of course yeah uh, yeah Korea it won't change if anything it will grow um, uh, probably Yeah, it's it's in the works. The the priority right now is to revamp the site. That's my first priority. So the yeah, look of the site right. The, well, of the, site? the look in the functions too, in terms of well, yeah, I guess the the ability to, we'll say to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as new software goes, there there is the hope that uh, I want to up date some of the software that I've got. So mm -hmm. for example, if you go into my job information journal or my idea cookbook, it's really primitive software and it's not very good. Right. So what I need to do is actually move all of that into uh, just a better like database, you know, MySQL kind of database excellent software. Um, but it's a lot of work, even for a programmer, somebody who sure. really knows what they're doing. And so um, you have to do everything a step at a time. I have lots of ideas. Um, also partnerships as well. I was approached by somebody in Canada that's developed wonderful material for business English. And he's offered essentially Which to get... Popular. It is. And he's essentially going to be, I hope, nothing is set yet, but but to provide me with the opportunity to uh, give this content uh, to students and teachers That's on great. my site. So, you know, one of the ideas, too, is to be able to work together with other people to build up uh, the quality of the content um, and also to reorganize some of the, the content that I already have uh, online. So, for example, my hint of the day, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hints, but good luck finding them. Right. So uh, it's not particularly well organized. Um, there's lots to do, but... Uh, I don't sweat the small stuff. I, I do what I can do. I'm not one that uh, I don't really freak out or get stressed out. Um, you know, if, if, if it I, isn't working, it'll eventually. Exactly get right. They're they're just you know. I mean, th there's a lot that I would like to do, but I'm a believer that you have to have priorities. That you can't do everything. You know. Which does remind me, uh, in the last interview that you right. did with us back in October, right. Jeff asked you a question that you never answered. What was that? Which was, what is your least favorite part of your site? You were very happy to talk about oh. your most favorite. Huh. Um, but now that you're changing things, it, it's led us to presume that you actually do have a least favorite part. Huh, that's so what interesting. what are you most looking forward to huh. adapting? Right. Um, oh, that's actually a hard question. Well, there are sections that I just I need to just take out. Like I have one called the address book, which I think is awful. You know, I shouldn't even be. Oh yeah, the software, everything. It's just it's a horrible. See, the way I developed my site was I would find some program and I would think, what can I do with the program? Like the idea cookbook, it was a real cookbook program. And I thought, oh okay, well, that's how about an idea cookbook? And that's kind of how the site developed. And like the address book is just something that is just to me just useless. So yeah, yeah. I don't like the design, although the design certainly could change with a programmer changing the look. But it's just, you know, I look at it and I think, that's really crummy. <laughs> what have I, I got to get rid of that. So as the site evolves, there there have been in the past sections that have just been acts that a lot of people don't remember. Not necessarily because they were bad, but because I couldn't keep them up. Graffiti Wall was one, which was great, which was one of the early uh, pages I had where I posted graffiti by hand every day. And it was this virtual wall of graffiti. And then I had a question and answer page where I answered questions from students and teachers. It was kind of like a Dear Dave page. And it was it was a lot of fun, but uh, later it just turned into the help center. So instead of asking me, you could just ask a whole team of uh, teachers. So um, one area that's a nightmare to 
uh, maintain is uh, my web guide, which uh, started off as it's like a search engine, and uh, it started off. Big. It is. I have th something like three or four thousand links, right. and uh, uh, it started off where w I, when I publish I published a book called. I don't know the name of it, <laughs> Dave Sperling's <laughs> Internet Guide or something like that. Uh, but, but in 97 or so, I published this book, and I, it was a collection of lots and lots of links. And I thought, well, they're going to go outdated really quickly. I need to get these online. So I took most of the links in there and others as well, and I put them into this web guide. And it's, uh, it's actually wonderful uh, if I could keep it up. And one of these days, I'm hoping, uh, just as I'm starting to get volunteers to help, I'm hoping that somebody might, uh, somebody out there might want to volunteer to help keep these uh, links updated and to to try to get some of the new links added. It's kind of an area of my site that I've kind of neglected over the last year or so. We have a telephone yeah. For yeah. The there we go. <laughs> That's, That's right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thanks for coming in. I hope. That you'll be doing this for a long time. I hope we get the chance. I hope to talk so. About it again Thank you. In well, Korea. and I look forward to the soju challenge this evening, which we this will is going to be, be posting some video. Of. Wow. Well, this is going to be interesting. Uh, the soju challenge. Um, what can I say? I mean, that's why I came to back to Pusan anyway. We Forget the conference. You, you know, that's, that's right. right. That's right. right. Yeah. Jeff says he can do six bottles, and I'm going to see if it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, thanks for your time. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the the time and uh sorry about my <laughs> punch drunk jet lag reaction, but um Makes I enjoyed it. Yeah, and I think you're doing great work. Keep it up. It's my turn to thank you. Uh, we have a, uh, um, we have to change rooms. We have to get out of here as soon as possible. The very kind gentleman